Okay, so today we're going to be doing an uh, algorithmic problem in which um, we identify the largest binary gap within a binary number. And by binary gap, we mean the number of consecutive zeros that are surrounded at both ends by a 1. So, um, as you should know, um, a binary uh, number is composed of only ones and zeros. So for example, um, a nine would be represented by a one zero zero one in binary form. I'm not gonna go into the details of um, what binary is, but just know that every number has a binary representation of it that is composed of ones and zeros. Okay. So we're trying to find a maximum binary gap in any binary number, right? That's what our function is going to do that we're quoting out. So let's say we have a nine. Um, I'm typing it out in the coding window in codality. This is a codality problem, by the way. Um, so we have a one, zero, zero, one. So take a moment here, and what would the binary gap in nine be? it would be two, right? Because there are two zeros in between uh, the ones. So that's the maximum binary gap for nine. Now, we have a number one, zero, four, one. And one, zero, four, one actually has two binary gaps. As you can see, it has um, three ones and in between uh, each of the two ones within the three ones, there is uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, zeros. And next we have three zeros. So out of the two binary gaps compared, uh, contained within 1041, um, the largest binary gap, or the max binary gap, is five, right? So now we know what we're going to do. So the question is, how are we going to approach solving this uh, from a coding perspective? So let's take, uh, let's identify the edge cases first before even going into how to solve it. There will be a case where we'll have all ones, and there'll be a case where we'll have all zeros. In both these cases, we just return a one from the function, a zero from the function, right? So now let's look at a potential uh, solution in order to solve this problem. Um, so we'll diagram it out for um, description's sake. So let's say we'll have two pointers, right? And whenever um, we find a one, we will um, set the first pointer to i, and the second pointer will increment from the position of i to isolate the second uh, position of 1, right? So as you can see, we have a i, then a j got incremented uh, around um, 7 times before I found the next one, and whenever i and j is um, whenever i and j both equal 1 and there are zeros in between them, we will store that gap of, in this case it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The gap was 5 zeros. And then we will set i is equal to j, right? Because we got the gap, and now we need to start off at the end point where j was. And start finding where the next, uh, and then start tracking where the next one is going to be right 
So then we'd increment to j again. So we increment it once, two, three, four, and we found the next j. So we would store the gap. And the gap this time would be three. And then we set i to j. And once it gets to the end where um, i and j are equal to, or j is equal to uh, the end of the length of the binary number, we're done, right? Um, especially when i catches up. So let's break that into steps that we're going to code out. So one, have pointers i and j set to position zero of um, binary number two. What do we do next? Increment j pointer until it hits a uh, one in the binary sequence. Three. Store um, since i and j are both position pointers, we're going to subtract j minus i to get the gap. Get the gap. But it isn't actually j minus i, right? Because if we look a little bit more closely, in this case, what would i be equal to? It would be uh, taking into consideration that the first position is 0. We'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So in our final example, i was equal to 7, and j was equal to 8, 9, 10, 11, equal to 11. So if we were to subtract j minus i, what would we get? We'd get 4 instead of 3. Correct? And that's not the right answer. So in this case, since we start off at 0, we'd actually have to subtract um, a 1 as well. And that's how we get the actual gap. So it would be j minus i minus 1 to get the uh, binary gap. So what happens after we um, find a binary gap? We set i is equal to j and then we repeat the process. Repeat until um, we get through the entire array. So we named two edge cases before uh, we even started. And the question is, how are we going to deal with them? So we know that we can have a 1, 1, 1, 1, and we can have a 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's start coding it up, right? So we do know that we're going to have our binary. We need to get our binary form of n, which is the variable that is passed into our JavaScript function. So in order to convert a regular number into uh, its binary representation in um, JavaScript, you could just use this, right? Uh, that function will give you the binary form. Another variable we want to um, store is the max gap. We don't need to store all the gaps since this function only returns the maximum gap. Correct? So now let us iterate through our binary number. So we have our i pointer is equal to 0. And while i is less than binary n dot length, because we're going through the entire array, right, of the binary um, array that we converted uh, from our number. We 
increment. So that's our first pointer, which is pointing to, as you can see here in our diagram, that which will start off at the first element. Next, we're going to set j is equal to i because there is another secret condition here. j always has to be larger than i since we are, um, if we look at how we iterated through the loop, j never fell below. And whenever i caught up to j, j will have to be incremented, right? Because we're finding the binary gap forward. So j is always equal to i. And while j is less than binary n dot length, because it's also going to go to the end, j plus plus. So these are our two pointers. Now we have to identify the case where we're going to store the gap, right? So this is our first case, binary n of i is equal to 1. and binary n of j is also equal to 1 and i is not equal to j. Those are our conditions and this is needed because um, of how we Um, increment our value. So j will always start off at the current position of i. If we wanted to get rid of this condition, we could just say j is equal to i plus 1. Right? Now, what is our second condition? If max gap is less than j minus i minus 1, which is the condition we um, identified here for, I, for figuring out the gap, what we'll do is we'll set our max gap is equal to j minus i minus 1. Okay, but there is another condition that we have to pay attention to, right? Um, here, there are conditions in which multiple ones might be next to each other. Those are our edge cases, right? So if i is equal, if binary n, so if binary n of i is equal to 1 and binary n of j is equal to 1, j is equal to i is equal to j, right? Always. So whenever these positions are matched, um, whether the max gap has been incremented or not, i will always equal the value of j. And in order to store the max gap, we also need to make sure that um, should we check that there are zeros in between? I don't think so. I think this will actually compensate for everything. So let's actually give it a shot. I might have forgotten a condition, but this should actually um, compensate for all the conditions and, and uh, should be the solution to our problem. So let's see. We'll run our code. So okay. Um, so it we found that it is now storing the max gap and returning the correct values. So let's give it a shot. Um, and whenever you solve the algorithmic problem, I suggest that you first explain it, especially if this is during an interview. So you would um, um, explain the problem that you're going to solve to make sure that you're solving the correct problem. Uh, diagram it out. Um, you could make mistakes during the diagram. Then outline the steps that you're going to use in order to um, solve the problem. Use pseudocode or whatever, if that helps. Sometimes using pseudocode well, before actually coding it out will help you um, identify any mistakes in your logic. And by talking through it with the interviewer, 
you will get a better um, they'll understand where you're coming from and because they can't read your thoughts right uh, so communicate so this is the solution let's see if it works so submit task okay Cordality is going to um, assess it and yep yeah, that was it so that was the solution to um, the codality problem of finding the longest sequence of zeros um, in a binary representation of a zero. I'll put a description of the question in the um, uh, video link below. Till next time.